Hello there everyone, my name is Rexby and welcome back to some more Let's Play Professor Layton and Pandora's Box. We're here on the Molentary Express and we're going to do some exploring and see if we can find any more information about where yes, this train is headed. Um, we got interrupted by this lady. She's quite rude. And he was saying we uh, are going to explore and see if we can find out more about the Elysian box or where this train is headed and, you know, if we can find out more about what happened to Dr. Schrader. But uh, let's uh, listen to Babette. That reminds me. I believe it's dipping time for my sweet baby. I'm off to visit the dining car. Aha, uh -huh, she has an annoying voice. Yeah, I guess she does seem like the type of having too much money to throw away. Rich and flashy. Yep, so uh, let's uh, be formal. I, I, I shouldn't start insulting and judging people. I should be formal. That's right, Layton. Let's be a proper gentleman here. G good advice, good advice. I'm just going to keep uh, going onward. Wait, mm. no, you know what? We don't want to dine quite yet. I'm actually curious, what's in this room here? We we have a pitcher. Ah, nice craftsmanship. Oh, it looked like the, a glass pitcher to me. It didn't look too amazing, but... Oh, well. I, I suppose uh, sitting in a nice sunset with a drink is nice. Uh... And, oh, not, he has a puzzle for us about pitchers, a sour defeat. Two men, known here as one and two, are playing a strange game. First, both men put their empty pitchers on the table. Next, a judge brings a pitcher filled with vinegar and places it in either spot A or spot B. The judge then starts shifting the vinegar from one pitcher to any adjacent pitcher over and over. After moving the liquid 55 times, the owner of the vinegar filled pitcher must down it in one. Ugh. If you were to judge and secretly wanted number two to drink the vinegar, would you place the pitcher down in spot A or B? Now, this, uh, isn't really all that difficult it says 55 so you might you know be inclined to just start counting all the way up to 55 and imagining about things but all you need to know is that it's an uneven number so say we place it in a first then a would be one b would be two a would be three etc a would have all the uneven ones and would have 55 so what we instead want to do is start by putting it in B, then A would be 2, and B would be 3, 5, 7, etc. All the way up to 55, and it would end up in spot B. So, the correct answer here is B. Here goes. Piece of cake. And uh, here it shows you basically how it would go. But I uh, explained that. So yeah, that's uh, a good answer, but we probably shouldn't hang around in some stranger's room, especially when they're not there. That That's a little bit silly. So let's head onward to the dining hall now. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe talk with the waiter. Maybe uh, he has some food for us. That, that would be good. Oh, ah, uh, all the seats are taken. I, I guess uh, we can't have lunch quite yet. Oh, but he does have a puzzle for us. So let's feed our intelligence a bit. Puzzle number seven, four couples. Four couples sit in a crowded dining car. All diners are sitting next to or across from their partners. The Joneses are sitting by the ale, aisle, I never know how to pronounce that word. The mustachioed Mr. O'Connor is sitting next to his wife and Mr. Lambert is sitting opposite his wife. Using the information above, can you determine where Mrs. Hatley is sitting? Circle her and touch submit. Okay, 
So let's see if we can uh, narrow this down. We know Mr. O'Connor is the guy with the mustache. So that's him. And he's sitting next to his wife. So neither of those is Miss Hatley. Furthermore, we know that um, the Joneses are uh, sitting at the aisle. Now, since they can't be sitting across from each other because this is B is already Mr. O'Connor, it must be that they are C and G. Furthermore, we know that Mr. Lambert is sitting across from his wife, so Mr. Lambert must be sitting here with his wife here, which leaves E and F as the Hadleys, and since we need to know who Miss Hadley is, it should be E. Oh, we need to draw it around her as a person. So that should be good. And now to test my theory. And there we have it. Yep, that's right. We got it right. And uh, here's another explanation if you want to read it. Ah, good. Nothing whets the appetite like a hearty puzzle. Oh, so you make us more hungry. Oh, uh, at least the table became free. Ah, good. Time for lunch. Luke's starving. I could eat too. Oh, what? But bat, you again? You're... You're just gonna sit. What? You're insulted. You are throwing a tantrum. Well, well, well. Spoiled much? Very pushy. Huh. I suppose uh, we can check out the observation deck while uh, we wait a bit more. But yeah, he did keep his comp posure and she was really a spoiled customer so I I do uh, think he did a good job with that although it's still a bit of a shame that she still got her way but uh, let's go to the deck let's see if we can find that so uh, from here there are two doors here there's one on the right and uh, one on the left let's uh, go through the left one first ah. A lot of stuff to eat. So, this is the kitchen, huh? I guess that's not quite the observation deck, but hey, macaroon! Uh, why, why can't we have that? What? Our clothes aren't dirty. We're very clean, thank you very much. Uh, I do suppose that he is running a kitchen and he doesn't quite want anyone coming in there. It's... Fair enough. Oh, what? What did you spot, Luke? Huh? What's that then? A little pat, and you lecture us. Oh, well, more like the hamster is out of the bag. But yeah, you've been caught red-handed, buddy. Uh, it's against the rules, all right. But he's your only friend. Well. I guess, you know, I, I understand that somewhat. I mean, you know, I really enjoy my cat, even, like, and I, I guess I could see why you would consider your pet a friend. But, um, <laughs> that's a very, very eloquent way to call someone fat, Leighton. Yep, a hamster, the noblest creature of all. So uh, you bought him as a, as some company, and you feed him all the scraps. So, well, that that seems like a lot of food for a hamster. Oh, poor thing. Well, he's gonna ask us for a favor to uh, look after him for a little bit, so uh, we can maybe improve his diet a little bit, get him in shape. We're hamster trainers now, and. Uh, Luke is more than happy to do it, so Leighton uh, is fine too. So, you're welcome. Glad we got some uh, weight of your chest. And uh, we now have a new hamster, you can check up on the hamster anytime. And uh, I'll, I'll, I won't really be showing that off, um, but yeah, he gives us an apple as well. Now. You can gather toys like this uh, throughout the game, and 
Wait, before I continue that, let's give him na a name. Now I'm actually um gonna call this hamster um name him after myself. Now most of you probably have never heard my uh, name in real life, but I'm actually called Max in real life. Um, but I had the nickname Hamster because as a little kid, I used to like literally just shove entire sandwiches in my mouth and then start chewing. So why not name this hamster after myself? Because that's not conceited or anything, right? But yeah, uh, here's Max, the little hamster. Squeak. Ah, uh, how cute. And uh, Luke is already good friends with him. Now, like I said, you know, we do have this uh, hamster puzzle here. Now, I'm not going to shut it off uh, until one of the bonus episodes. Uh, because it's just something that I want to cover later on. I don't really want to go over that now. Because right now we can't really do anything with it. And I'd rather just have that in a separate episode when we can actually do all the things with it. So for now I'm going to put that off. But I will be coming back to that at some point. Uh, later on so yeah and doesn't look like there's any hint coins here either huh well let's uh, just head back out and move our way to the observation deck i suppose that's the right door then and uh, oh who are you oh sally Ooh, a beverage or a snack i i mean we're we're gonna have lunch we probably shouldn't yeah oh of course you don't Wow, attitude. I'm sorry, Sally. Well, I suppose we'll solve a puzzle, but you should really not show that attitude to customers or potential customers. Let's solve puzzle number six, piles of pancakes. Here's a tasty puzzle for you. Can you move the pile of pancakes from the blue plate on the left to the red plate on the right. Wait, though, it's not as easy as it sounds. You must follow these rules. You can only move one pancake at a time, and you cannot place a pancake on top of another one that is smaller than itself. You can use the middle plate and move the pancakes as many times as you'd like. So, uh, let's uh, see if we can just do this. I'm gonna put this small one on here, and this one on here. And we can put this small one on top of here, so we can finally put the t bottom here. That works very well. And then we can just stack it like that. And uh, the chef doesn't get any food, but this guy on the right does. Hmm. Let's see if this works. That was almost too easy. Was it, Luke? Well, it's a variant of the Tower of Hanoi puzzle. So that's a quite old one, isn't it? Yeah, we have a brain, all right. So uh, next up is in Dropstone, huh? There's nothing there. Well, okay. I, I suppose we'll have to check out Dropstone later on when we uh, get there. And let's keep moving on now. And hmm, doesn't look like there's anything too interesting here. We could go in that to that room, but hmm, we'll do that later probably. Ah, what a lovely deck indeed. I, I, I really like the view a lot. Breeze feels great. The scenery is simply breathtaking. Look, you can see a lake over there. I didn't spot any lake, but... Wow, it's a nice view indeed. Oh, and Leighton has another puzzle for us. Which is going to be puzzle 11. Trees in the forest. Okay. So, the forest below contains four different types of trees. Use the stylus to divide the forest into four sections, each containing one of each type of tree. So, uh, that's pretty interesting, wouldn't you say? Um, I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and um, start at the bottom here. Uh, in the bottom left, we have this one orange tree and then... These two, we probably need to draw a line between them because they are quite the same. Um, now, that also means that this one, these two are going to be connected. So we probably don't want that one in there. And uh, then we can draw it like that. And then we have one section with four different ones. 
Now let's go to the right ear. The one above that works. And then if we have these two there, that's four different types of tree. Um, now for the top right. Well, it's really quite easy. We already have these three here. And uh, we can just make an intersection like that. And that has four different ones as well as this top left one. This looks good to me. Here goes. That was almost too easy. Ah, nice gorgeous scenery. Ah, that's it. Well done. Well, did you expect any less? I I suppose not. I suppose not. Feels so nice you were forgot we were searching for the Elysian box. Uh, well, yeah, it did seem to lead Andrew to his death, so we're gonna have to go ahead and solve that. Ah, yeah, I I, I do feel like uh, we know what the train is like, so uh, let's get our investigation on the road. Let's see if we can find some people, talk with them, and uh, get some more stuff done, but... Someone threw out their trash. Like, you shouldn't litter, people. Don't litter. It's not good. That's just, yeah, you have no manner, no class. So, uh, let's uh, take care of this mess. With puzzle number 22. Cleaning up one. Put that rubbish into the bin where it belongs. Move the blocks obstructing your pot and slide the pile of rubbish into the bin at the bottom of the screen. Now, as some of you guys may know who have watched my first Let's Play, I'm really bad at sliding puzzles. So whenever we come to any of these sliding puzzles, I'll be speeding them up like I'm doing now and just showing you guys the answer quickly. So just explaining this now, if you ever see it in future episodes, it's just going to be sped up footage to save you guys time and to save myself a lot of anguish. To test my theory. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. There we go. That's cleaned up. And uh, those cats quite seem to like it too. Ah, no more litter. Very wonderful. So, uh, I uh, suppose we're gonna head down now. And you know what? I'm going to do one more puzzle. So let's talk with this guy here. Ah, there's nothing like travel by rail to put a spring in your step. If you say so. I couldn't agree more. And there's no better way to do it than on a train as fine as yours, Mr. Beluga. Ah, so he's the train owner. Hmm, so you know my name, do you? But of course. This train and its owner have quite a reputation in London. I've seen your face in the papers more than a few times. Ho oh, ho, is that so now? I'm sorry, uh, my friend, but I can't say I know you as well as you seem to know me. No, well, you'll know us soon enough because we're Leighton. The name is Herschel Leighton. I'm a professor of archaeology by trade, but a train enthusiast on the side. And very good at solving mysteries, too. I've heard tales of this train's grandeur, so I decided it was time to experience it, firsthand. Well, isn't that something? It certainly is a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Layton, was it? A lot of characters in this game seem so forgetful of my name. Oh my, just look at how late it's gotten. I really have to run. Do enjoy your time aboard. Where are you going to run to? We're on a moving train. But oh well, I, gu I guess he left. You know what? I'm going to call that an episode here. So thank you guys very much for watching once more. Please do consider subscribing if you want to see more Professor Layton and Pandora's Box. And then we'll see you guys next time.